He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What glorious news it is that we come and celebrate this Easter Sunday. I know it is a little different. Okay, a lot different than we normally have worshipped here for an Easter Sunday ever. However, no matter where we find ourselves, we certainly have the same joy within our heart as we celebrate the good news of the gospel. Because in the end, isn't that what today is all about? This Lenten season has been very unique. We have not worried about giving up chocolate or um, giving up smoking. Instead, what we have fasted from most profoundly is community. We have been reminded on the power that there is in gathering together as the body of Christ and certainly how we miss our family and friends. We hope that this social distancing will be something of the past, very useful for this time for sure, but not something that we ever want to repeat again. The season of Lent has been a wonderful reminder that even though we are far from each other, we are never far from that which is most important of all, and that is God. I think in this season, a number of you have shared with me how your faith has deepened and you have grown closer in your walk with the Lord. And in the end, isn't that the most glorious gift that we could have? God has not left us in these days. We have looked around perhaps and wondered where he is and how this is part of his will and, and what we can learn from all of it. But I hope, like me and others, we have not faltered in our faith. As Mary looked into that tomb so long ago, the empty tomb, we're reminded that we ourselves gaze into that empty space and we wonder oftentimes in our life, where did God go? And what does it mean? Oftentimes we are confused until we can find him and discover him in a new way once more, just as Mary did, and the disciples will as well. See, the truth is there would never have been a church if there wasn't the resurrection. It is what we have, our faith is built upon, our churches rest the, everything on, our whole world rests upon this truth, that on that day, this day that we celebrate, the world changed in a very profound way. Nobody expected it. Nobody quite understood it at the time. And I would venture to say that we ourselves don't quite understand it now. But I'm reminded as we are reading from Jeremiah this day, it says, at that time, says the Lord, the time when Israel will return, he says, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword, or I might say, the virus, found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you, and I will build you, and you will be built. This is our Lord speaking not only to the Israelites of so long ago, but to us today. These days will become part of our history. They will no longer be our present moment, but a story for us to look back upon and recount to others going forward. Our world has changed in a very profound way, but I hope that one thing that will come out of this will be a deeper and abiding faith in our Lord. We have been reminded of what a tremendous gift it is to gather as the church, to hear his word, to sing his praise together, to be uplifted by each other's presence and reminded that we are a family of God. But this time has been a lesson for us that God has not left us for a moment in any of this. That empty tomb that he left behind is like us walking away from all the emptiness in our life because we have been embraced by a greater truth. Mary and the disciples and so many of us are on the way, with a capital W, if you will, the way of the path of faith and understanding. We will grow and we will expand. We will remain hopeful and confident. We will remain witnesses to see where God is already working in the world around us. We have seen it in those who are working on the front lines, in hospitals and 
daycare centers and nursing homes and veterans homes who are looking to help and nurture and sustain and comfort and heal those that are under their care, putting their own lives at risk and putting their own families aside for a time. What great gift of a sacrifice that truly is. We've seen it for those who are in our grocery stores and our garbage men and all those occupations that before maybe we never even paid much attention to. But now we realize the importance, the importance of the humble, the importance of the servant. I think there's a tremendous lesson in that for each of us as well. We're grateful for the government and community leaders who are working so hard to protect our safety and want to have an economy that's going to be there for us on the other side. All of that is wonderful and very important work. But in all of this, I hope that we are reminded that what we have discovered we can depend on has never been our jobs or our investment portfolios or any of those other things in the world. It's been God alone. I know in this season where we celebrate God's love, this Easter tide, which is going to go on for a number of days, we are reminded each and every time that the resurrection started a whole new world. The resurrection was God's proof that we will not be defined by our sins or our brokenness or the way things, we get things wrong, but we will be defined by whose we are. We will be defined by who we are called as, as disciples of Christ. We will be defined by God's love and not our own brokenness. Isn't that just a wonderful gift to celebrate? Isn't that a wonder, that a mystery that is almost too much for us to comprehend? Well, frankly, it is too much for us. But I don't think we totally get it, and maybe until we get to the other side. We grieve for those who have lost loved ones to this virus. This has been a very difficult time, and we will not forget anyone. But the one we most won't forget is the one that we can turn to in all times, whether we are rejoicing or whether we are grieving. For our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the rock upon which we can rest. He is the one who overcame sin and death that we might have hope. He is the one that we can always turn to in all of the seasons and phases of our life, and he will always be there. Not because of what we are owed, but because of who God is. The wonder and the majesty of our Lord Jesus Christ, who spent his whole time here on earth, misunderstood by the disciples and those who would follow him and those who would bring him down. Nobody quite understood who Jesus was. But after the resurrection, after that hope was born, what a wondrous world that we have the opportunity to be a part of. I hope in this Easter season that you will be encouraged, that your faith will remain solid in all of this, that you will witness to the glory that is the Lord's and assured that our Lord and our Savior loves us so much that he would never leave us behind. He may teach us things because he wants us to grow closer to him, but it's only because he loves us so much. In this Easter tide, may we rejoice and proclaim the good news to everyone that we meet through everything that we do or say for acts of kindness and compassion given because of the faith that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is how people will know that we are Christians, not just by what we say, but more importantly, by what we do and how we live our lives. He is risen. Let us rejoice in that truth. He is risen. Let us be the disciples that he calls us to be. He is risen and has overcome all, and in him we have our hope, our light, our joy, our grace, the most profound gift that God has ever given this world. Let us not walk away from this Easter season unchanged, but instead let this Easter season, let this promise sink deep into our souls, deep into our lives, into our hearts, and let us emerge from the tombs that would hold us back to be the people that Christ calls us to be, a people of light, love, grace, joy, happiness, peace, and full of good works in his name. May it be so in the name of Jesus Christ, who truly is our Lord and Savior, and all his disciples said, Amen.